today's lesson, we are going to understand how to transfer an image in terms of drawing onto our watercolor paper. When doing so, we want to make sure that we are starting with a gesture drawing of our object or our favorite food. And within that gesture drawing, you are going to make sure that you are pressing lightly and very understanding to finalize the lines that you create for your drawing, which will then eventually become your painting. All said and done, when our painting is complete, we don't want to see any pencil lines. So we'll go ahead and get that started with the drawing on the first page of your paper. You're going to come in with a pencil, and we're going to start by breaking things down. So we see that I have a pineapple here. You can break the pineapple down into basic shapes. So here we kind of have an ovally kind of rectangle, if you will. And then here we also have kind of more of a oval if you just break all these forms into one basic shape comes to terms of a long, tall oval. So with that understanding, you want to start with a quick gesture drawing to make sure your image or your drawing is an accurate size for the paper as well as in the correct spot. Remember, we don't want to draw this too big because we need to allow space for our water splash on the background. And we don't want to draw it too small because then we have all this space on the paper and our drawing and composition would just be too small. So that's why you start with a gesture drawing. A quick, light, free-flowing drawing of what's going to happen, and then you can erase all those extra lines. And since you press lightly, then they will be able to be erased completely. So I'm going to start with the big, the, you usually want to start with the biggest portion of the object. So for me, that would be the actual pineapple itself. So I'm going to come in. I once again need to understand that there's going to be color splashes around the edge. Remember my example here of a completed work. Started with an image like this. I eliminated the hand, but I took this smaller ice cream cone idea and enlarged it on my paper, once again allowing enough space for all the splashes to occur on that. So, that being said, I'm going to start by pressing very lightly for how large I think my pineapple is going to be. It's a little bit bigger at the base. I'm making and then smaller at the top. I'm making a bunch of lines right now, just understanding exactly where I will finalize the rest of the lines to complete the size, accurate size and location of my pineapple. Okay, so now you can see here the pineapple. Then the same basic idea for the top or the stem. So we have just a basic oval. I'm pressing lightly now and just drawing an oval for that portion and then once it's the accurate size I want then I can add all the little frilly details and such. So basically here you have the gist of your object and the size that we're looking for. So mine's once again the pineapple. Your food item could be whatever your favorite food is. And then I have an accurate sized drawing for the paper and understanding that there's going to be a color splash on the back. Now, since I press lightly, I can come in and erase all my extra lines. So with a gesture drawing, you can see that there are lots and lots of lines going on here. Now I need to pick and choose which one is the most sufficient line that I want to keep. So I'm going to come in with my eraser. Once again, I press lightly so these lines can be erased entirely. If we press too hard, it will dent the paper and leave a mark and never go away. So we definitely want to avoid that. I'm erasing all those extra little lines that I don't need anymore because I know exactly where I want my lines to be for my pineapple. The top, I'm going to basically erase all of these lines. I'm just using them as a guide. So I just kind of drew a circle or an oval here, and then I'm eventually going to erase all of that because I'm going to then add all the details of the stem and the leaves. Okay, so now I can start to do that. So now I can kind of understand it kind of starts small and bows up in the towards the top and then you have the extra little stems popping out there so I'm going to start with whatever I feel most comfortable with so now you can see how I'm branching outside that line I created that was just the guide now I'm coming in and adding exactly what I see and where I see it to the right hand 
inside. <clears throat> Understand which leaf branches on top of what leaf and how they form on top of one another. So now this leaf line is on top of that leaf, so now I understand that this leaf is on top of that one. Same thing here, when I create this big leaf here, that leaf is behind these leaves. And then I don't need these extra lines. Once again, pressing lightly so I can erase those. And working off like that. Now I can come in and erase that oval that I created. Once again, I press slightly so it's going to be entirely eliminated. It was just a guide for how to form the leaves itself. There's a bunch of negative space right here. So then we don't need that line there for the oval. We definitely want to get rid of that completely. Understanding which leaves branch outside that oval, which ones stay confined inside of it things to think about. Once again, we are all drawing different food items, so you're not going to exactly follow how I'm going about this. The main thing I want you to focus on is breaking your object down into the basic shapes. You have a circle, oval, square, rectangle, triangle, cylinder, cone, sphere, if you want to go into the form versus shape idea, but there you have that. Now I can understand how all these little details are created. They're all kind of like half moons almost, with a line right down the middle. So you can come in, understand how that works. Come in here across the sides. And continue on. I'm going to go ahead and finish this drawing. Once again, here is a little close-up view. I don't want to spend too much time um, videotaping myself doing the drawing. I'm going to come in and add some more details. Everybody has a different food item, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and finish mine. You continue to work on yours, and we'll see how they turn out. Get ready for the next video as I will start to talk about the underpainting and starting to develop our colors with watercolor.